Alright, so basically it's just about how to farm sheep without dispenser and shears being a thing in 1.12, since it's just gonna shear out a shear instead of shearing the sheep. So the option that we have is we'd use carry on to stick the head of a sheep inside of blocks. So switching to survival, you can just pick carry on and put a, the sheep into a setup like this. And I'm going to compare the two. This one here, we can shear it. And the wool can, well, generally can be kind of random. It might land on the ground here. Looks like it's kind of stuck on top right now. No, it just fell down here. We are still able to read the sheep while they're in here. And when the baby appears, it can just walk out. This one's a little better. It uses leaves and glass, and the wool is guaranteed to come out on top for easier collection. And same thing, we could breed the sheep still in this thing, and they can still walk out. The sheep in this state are also pretty safe. I can spawn darklings, which like to kill sheep. All of these sheep are safe. See, they're kind of friendly, so most so mob events or random lycanites won't kill your sheep. They're safe in these. And in case you need to breed a lot of them, you can just do a cart tower with all the heads in a transparent block that won't suffocate them. I've done like eight cart folds of this. And what you do is you basically love arrow them. So bow, and then the arrow that you can use is the area of the effect love arrow. And you can either, you can look up the switch bro mod to look up the multi-block structure to upgrade the normal area of effect love arrows into the transforming ones. But love arrow area of effect uses the pretty easy to craft love potion and also the pretty easy to craft silver arrows. And it's pretty easy, you just shoot the tower. The normal area of effect love arrow, I think, can affect up to six mobs. And then the transforming, I think, is like eight. I'm not sure exactly, but it's pretty easy to breed up sheep if you want to fill up any of these setups here. And just a reminder, we'll download in the description. And I forgot to show off how to set up the tower here. Real simple, two blocks. Then you just build a, up this pillar of glass or leaves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. About nine glasses is the minimum. And you want to stick them in so you don't see their uh, HP bar. So that means nothing can target them. And as you can see, at certain angles, I can no longer see the HP bar of the sheep. And this means that they're safe in here. So, like these normal sheep out here, these will be targeted by dark blinks. And then see these other sheep are completely fine. And that's about it for this part. Alright, so the next thing is the mass shearing setup, which is pretty easy. You uh, place all the sheep in and you just walk by shearing all of them. And then their drops wool would end up on top and just flow through. All that be easily collected there. And I'm going to show off the uh, slice of this. So this is uh, the slice kind of of it. We have a grass platform that the sheep stand on and then the full hitbox uh, transparent blocks that won't suffocate the sheep, but will provide enough, the big enough hitboxes so that wool doesn't just fly randomly around. It'll always go on, go clip on top. And your choice is that are easy to obtain early game are leaves. You just shear 
uh, trees. Or you could turn sand into glass in a furnace. That's another option. The stone here can be any block. This is a block here so the sheep can't walk out through the sides. So you could just be using dirt. On top, this is dirt that will turn into grass and help spread. This dirt here can be spread down to this block. Or you can have the S here spread up on here. And... All these blocks generally need to be at least light level 9 from either sunlight or from torch or block light. And in this top layer, same here. This top layer of grass can regrow here. This walkway can also regrow up here. And that's kind of it for the slicing. build two sorting variants this one uses any ice variant i'm using the ice and fire frozen dirt from ice dragons you can use the vanilla packed ice too it won't melt and it'll give the icy effect and then you'll need two uh, blocks that will spawn proof and keep the water from flowing so you could just use the rocks you find on the ground or from breaking stone with a pickaxe uh, this is one option. The These ice uh, item collections just let you make a super long setup where you can just keep holding W or uh, A or D, keep walking along. If you don't have access to ice, you can just use the cork grates. They're just made out of four iron bars, and then it makes four iron grates. Uh, 16 iron bars is made out of 6 iron ingots. Uh, though you don't need even to start off with any of these. You could just have your initial setup of just water, which would just require two water buckets. This one is really for similar materials, but instead of the ice, we just use two grates. And for both, I think it's there for or one module is 16 sheep and then 16 transparent blocks, so leaves or glass, and about a stack of a dirt. And four light sources, two buckets, and then two grates in this one. And those materials are about the same as this one. Instead of the four light blocks, it's four torches in this example, and ice of the grates. And uh, I need to fix the start of the video. I placed these grates wrong. The sheep are still able to walk out and through. You need the grates to be at this level to prevent the sheep from walking out. And yeah, so what would it look like? It would look like not this. Look like that. Or grates can be a little weird to place sometimes, but let's start off with this one. This is the they're both built about the same, but this is probably the light source, torches, probably light source you get access to first. The unfortunate thing is that kobold like to break torches. You see it pops off a lot of these torches here. What it won't break is this glowstone dust. You can use glowstone dust as a light source, and of course Cobalt will never break any of these uh, block lights, which conveniently don't uh, destroy the grass underneath them. So, as you can see, there's just glowstone dust here, and they emit light level 13 at their source, which is compared to torches, which emit level, like, level 14, which is one more and can cover more ground that way. And this is, yeah. Just dig out the ground a little for your walkway. Leave a little platform up here. Block above you. Dirt, dirt. Just kind of build a ring around it. And then one block of air. Then you put your transparent blocks above it. You throw all your sheep in here. The light block for torches is just one block in so this is the water source on this end to go in one put your torch here 
on the next diagonal. Uh, go in one, put the torch there. And same here. Water source, go in one, put the torch there. Last bit of water, go in one, torch there. And that's it for your first ground layer of light. And on top, if you only stack a single one, I would just recommend putting the torches basically directly above it uh, on the next level of where the next sheep would stand. This is so it's pretty easy to just build another one on top. And then you don't have to really care about where you put the light. Then if you build it to the side, you only use one torch instead of two. Actually, yeah, just about. Just one for the minimum here. I just cut it out here. And of course, one of the walls will be shared between the two. So you need a little less building box. And so you can just stack it up this way. The full block uh, light is built really similar. You can see that the uh, block light of your choice, full block light source, is basically in the same um, row as the torches. So, yep. And you can just throw them here, and you can see everywhere around here is light level 9. And another segment here, but since it's not an ice one, it has to have water flowing from this direction, going towards the grate over there. And, yeah, really similar light placements. You can throw in the sheep the same way. On top, you can use less lights too, same with the torches. If you plan to build multiple. So. If you are limited to grates. Um, you can build one, two, three, eight together here in this little area. That'll hold. Eight modules of 16 sheep, which is a lot of sheep. This farm has to be within loaded chunks. So generally in your render distance or server render distance. But I believe it also needs to be random ticked for the grass to regrow. And I think that's about 128 blocks for it to be in range. So that'll change like where you need to build this farm in order for it to work or grass will regrow for the sheep to eat. And that's about it. I think the next clip will be showing an example of me using it. Alright, so this is uh, a setup I made on a server. It is about uh, out of the server render distance of a common area that people will walk through because there is going to be 16 of these modules together here. And this is about enough to take out an entire shear. And in this setup here, I made it out of the ice setup. And you'll see the appeal. I just hold, yeah, I want movement key down and just run through it all pretty much here. In this setup here, I also have crops here because the sheep won't regrow their wool that fast. So might as well have another casual uh, productive farm to also be doing to wait the background for the sheep to regrow their wool although more commonly now i just find myself going over to either do ma mass trades after like doing a going through the larger community crop fields which are larger than this or just gathering up other trades or even just coming back to grind out cheap book enchantments in the anvil just throwing them together just do some basic trades and slowly grind a small, uh, some emeralds and then wait for the wool to regrow them. There's a lot of options to 
be doing something here and then have the that time in the background to have this sheep regrow their wool and here yep i just lost the shear and then all the wool will eventually collect down here coming back down to me through this thing So one shear and 16 modules gets you to about uh, eight and a half stacks of wool. And because Fletchers are a bit quirky sometimes, I have a ton of 15 Fletchers set up here where I could just trade them all here. You might need to respend some of the emeralds that you uh, get back from these trades into trying to re-unlock the trades of any locked Fletchers. Fletchers are more annoying than farmers to re-unlock their trades because they only have a limited amount of things that they want to buy emeralds with to easily re-unlock their trades with compared to a farmer which has like multiple uh, other things you can buy from them but also of course you're trading two different types of items which you more easily uh, re-unlocks their trade so that's why I only have one 15 15 farmer in this area when I do crop grinding here and out of convenience I also uh, brought a ton of 15 Fletchers over here So eight and a half stacks of wool get to about two stacks of emeralds if you trade with only 15 Fletchers. And how much wool has it been grown? Roughly a half. And this is using the inferior design, which I made before I figured out the more optimal uh, grass setup for this. Art. This is just me fixing a mistake where I'm just rebreeding up some sheep because I killed some Aegises and then an Argus spawned and was trying to shoot me and it killed some sheep. Another way that sheep can die is from a wisp passing the light ball to another wisp and uh, they don't care about what's between them. They're just gonna pass that between each other and then it'll kill any sheep along the way. So uh, if you ever get any accidents, this is an example of me reading up some more sheep. You could lead them into a hole, into a fence. I'm just carrying them into double carpet until they grow up so I could put them back in. Oh. Uh. 